Hi, I'm Bonnie Halib. Welcome to number two in a series of video tutorials on learning and installing RapidMiner. This is the second video in a series of getting started on RapidMiner. This one shows you how to work through the online tutorials. So when you log into RapidMiner or you open RapidMiner for the first time, you're going to go to the Welcome Perspective and you may be prompted to ask for a new local repository. That's a file folder in which you're going to store your RapidMiner programs and your results. So you can see my first one was a new local repository or I could have called it Bonnie's repository, whatever. Just give it a name and then uh, that will start that file for you. Right now I'm at the welcome perspective. This is like the home screen or the landing page whenever you open up RapidMiner. And you'll remember that you can have one of three perspectives. The design perspective, the results perspective, or the welcome perspective. That's the one we're looking at. And you can also switch by choosing view up here and choosing perspectives. Again, you can choose design, results, or you can see we're at the welcome page. This is where you go if you want to run the online tutorials. So you go ahead and run this, and then uh, you are brought into this rapid minor tutorial page. This first one, step one of 26, is a tutorial that reads in a list of rules and then derives a decision tree from those individual examples. So what it says is press the play button to start the process. So if we go back to RapidMiner, we see that it has loaded in a program which has a retrieve operator and a decision tree operator. And they're both yellow, they haven't been run yet. And when we go ahead and press this button, they will run. And then we will be switched to the, welcome, to the uh, results perspective so that we can see the results. So it will prompt you, do you want to clear the old results before starting? And you could say yes to remember my decision so that it doesn't ask you every time. And then it'll say there are new results. Do you want to switch to that perspective? And again, you can say remember my decision. You can go and switch these later if you don't like them. Uh, but it'll switch now to the results perspective. So you can see up here where the results perspective and we have a results overview and then we have a decision tree. So this decision tree shows the conclusions that we've come from running this these series of operators. If it's sunny and the humidity is over a certain percentage then we'll play golf but if, it, if it's I'm sorry, if it's below a certain percentage of humidity, we'll play golf. If it's, if it's too humid, we don't want to play golf. Um, if it's raining and it's windy, then we won't play golf. But if it's raining but not windy, we'll play golf. And if it's overcast, we'll play golf, regardless of those other factors. Now, what you'd like to see in this is, what were the examples that led to this, and how do we come up with this decision tree? Um, well... In order to do that, we need to break it down and watch it in operation a little bit better. So let's go back to the design perspective. And what we can do is set up breakpoints. You can see these are green because they've both been run now. There's a little green circle in the lower left-hand corner of each of these operators. If I right-click on the retrieve operator, I can set a breakpoint after. That means it runs the program until it gets to that point, and then it stops midstream so you can see the intermediate data and see what's going on. And as you go through these examples in the tutorial, you may want to do this to look at all of the individual steps along the way and to learn what's happening. So I'm going to set a breakpoint after, and I'm going to rerun it. So now, when I rerun, I get a different results perspective. Here it shows the metadata, but I want to go over here to the data to see the individual data that contributed to this. What we have are 14 rows, or some people would think of these as records or exemplars, and each of them has a series of columns. From a database perspective, we would think of these columns like the play column or the outlook column or the temperature column, and notice I can sort by them when I click on them. There's a humidity column, here's the wind column. People would think of these as fields in a record. And this column over here called play, that one is special. It's pink. All the rest of them are blue, and we'll look at why that is in a minute. But the reason is that is the conclusion. So that's what we are keying everything off of here. We're trying to decide when do we play golf. 
and we want the decision tree set up to make those determinations based on all these other inputs. If I look at the metadata view of this, then I can see that there are all of these columns or fields or attributes is the terminology that's used in Rapid Miner, so I'll try to use that going forward. For each of these attributes, all of them are regular except for the very first one, which is play. That's a label. That's our way of telling Rapid Miner this is the conclusion we want to get to. So we can look at the statistics for each of these individual um, attributes, the regular ones and then the special one called label. We see that there's uh, statistics for each one and then there's a range. So we can say uh, that, uh, for instance, with the play, there were five examples that were no and nine that were yes. And if we go back to our data view, and we see each of the rows here, we can count that row number one said no, number two said no, number six said no, number eight said no, and number 14 said no. So that's one, two, three, four, five no's, and then the rest were yeses. So I'm going back to the metadata view again. Uh, you can see that the outlook was sunny on some days and rainy on other days and overcast on other days. You can see that for temperature, this third row here, the uh, temperature average was 73.571 plus or minus a value, and that the range went from 64 degrees up into 85 degrees. And I think I should be able to grab this and spread this out. My cursor isn't being subtle enough that I can stretch it out. Okay, in humidity, the average humidity was 80, just over 80 percent, and that the range went from 65 to 96 percent humidity and that wind was either true or false. So these are different types. You should notice the type column here. There are nominal types, there are integer types, and we'll learn more about those in other examples. But this is trying to show you how to break down an example. So if I go back to the uh, design perspective here, now I can right click on retrieve, and I can click on breakpoint after, or I could use F7. And then you can see the little icon goes away. So now if I run it, it will run all the way through. And I get back to my decision tree that shows the results. So this is an example on how to do the first Rapid Miner tutorial example and pick it apart and see what's going on. You could now, I would encourage you now to look more at the design perspective and to look at each of these parameters and you can see that each of them has some attributes over here. This shows exactly where the data came from in this directory. So you could go in there and you could look for that data and you could change it and rerun it and see how it works. Uh, or you could put your own data in. You could use this as a template to easily run the same decision tree operator. And the decision tree operator has these parameters set. You could delve into them to learn more about it. Now let's see, uh, let's go on to just one more example in Rapid Miner so that you can see how that would be. So this is Rapid Miner tutorial step one. We've done all this just on step one and there are 25 more. So when you go to the next one, 26, now if we go and we look in here in the design view, there's actually a series of more than two steps. My screen is small so you can't see it all here. but. I make this narrower. You can see there's a series of steps that goes on way over here. And you can look at these steps. You can run the whole thing and you can learn from it. You can put breakpoints in here and look at the data as it's being processed through to see the results. This will help you to understand the tutorial uh, and will keep you working on that. I also have a list of the 26 tutorials that I'd be happy to provide you with that shows sort of a summary of them so you know where you're going with each one. Enjoy learning Rapid Miner.